Good morning, everybody. I'm up here on my roof to show you the roof system, how I made this roof and attached the glass to the front side of the greenhouse, which is on this side. And I'm going to show you how I made that for very inexpensively and just a little bit of enjoying the view today. <laughs> I don't get up here very often. When I do, I have to climb this tree here. It's my tree ladder. I strategically left some branches sticking out that I didn't cut so I could get up here when I needed to. But the most expensive part of this roof, believe it or not, were the screws. These little guys. These are little roofing sheet metal screws. They have a little black gasket under here. And that keeps the water from penetrating into the hole that you drill for these screws. Another aspect are the, on each seam, you put in this um, sticky tape underneath this panel, comes over this one underneath. This one, com this one comes over right here, and you put this sticky tape. It really holds well. I didn't think it would be waterproof for the years that it's been in service, but it really does keep the water out. At first I didn't have them. I had to undo all of these and put it in, and that really kept the water out. Um, I do insulate the underside of this roof with some uh, flat insulation. It's like a foam board, and so I glue onto the underside of this roof and kind of keeps it warmer during the winter time. But all of this roof came from a neighbor's hail-damaged roof. So all of it was free, and it was very close to me. I could use a trailer that I had to just come up the hill and um, bring it over here. I was going to use asphalt originally, and it would have upped the price, an asphalt roof. But luckily I didn't have to do that. And not only did I use this siding for the roof, or not only did I use this roofing for the roof, I also used it as the siding on the three sides. That's the glass side, the true side, and the back side, and the other side over here behind me. Uh, but that significantly reduced the price of this greenhouse. If you can ever find somebody tearing down a roof, especially after hail damage, uh, like you have hail in your area, it is worth it just to go looking for the metal roofs that are getting replaced. And I don't see any hail damage on this roof, yet the insurance company obviously gave him a new roof for it, so my benefit and could be yours too. So now I'll go down to the front side and um, or actually I'll go into the greenhouse and show you what's holding the roof up. So here we are inside the greenhouse and of course the roof I was standing on is right above me. And here's the insulation I was talking about. I don't know what you call this stuff but all of it I got from construction sites for free. This is just the scrap they throw away and I cut it. They're small to fit in between these purlins. Okay, these purlins are actually 2x4s because it was cheaper to do 2x4s than the 1x4s they sell at the, the box store. So 2x4 makes a great purlin um, and then 2x6 rafters. Um, these are held on this end by this beam. It's called Unistrut. This is another great thing that can save you, or at least save me, a lot of money in this greenhouse. Unistrut, this 20-foot beam, uh, costs probably about $40. I got mine salvaged for free. Uh, a friend of mine demolishes chip manufacturing plants and all this, and he's hauling this stuff out for free. But, you know, $40 isn't a lot to spend for a system if it does well anyway. Anyway, um, the way I did it, and I don't know, this isn't like building advice or anything, but 
way I did it is I just built my frame and then spanned the entire length of the greenhouse. That's 20 feet. And I created these little brackets from some shelving gondolas. Uh, they're just metal brackets that hold the rafters in. And those hold with little two little screws on each side. And the bracket, the white bracket, screws into the unistrut, actually bolts in. You can see underneath, there's a bolt right here, and it bolts in. It holds it. It's been up there for, oh, probably since 2005. I don't know. Oh, no, no, not 2005. It's been up for a long time. Um, I planned it in 2005, so I don't remember, but it's held 60 mile an hour winds. Uh, especially on this hilltop, we get a lot of wind coming up the side of the mountain. And it does creak a little because that's plexiglass and this is real glass. This is what I'm going to show you next. How did I hold all this real glass in place? You notice there are no um, structural 2x4s or anything in between here. And the trick, again, is this 20-foot piece of unistrut. But also, there's no weight on the top of this beam. The only weight is not the roof, but the plexiglass and these little 2x4s that are cut to fit, um, to fit into this little angle here. So those just support the plexiglass that's laying on top. And then this beam, the only weight is this plexiglass all across. And from there, the glass, I'll go to the outside and show you how I mounted it. Okay, so here is the glass on the outside. And this unistrut is like a letter C facing down the opening. And what I did was I shoved the glass up into it all the way. It's about three inches up high. And then once it's in there high, it moves down into this lower piece of unistrut, which is only that thick. Uh, that's like one and a half inches. And so you can see here on the seam, it has a nice uh, little spot on both sides. It's like a letter C again, but facing up. And I put gym pad foam underneath this rubber. This is pond liner. This is another most expensive part of this greenhouse. <laughs> this cheap pond liner was like $120. Anyway, um, underneath this pond liner in the bottom of the little letter C here is some of this gym flooring I cut into strips. It's like rubber flooring just to give the glass something to sit on that wasn't hard. And then, since this foundation is like three feet off the ground in some places, I used the rubber to go to the ground and come up and over and under the glass and over on the other side a little bit. So this keeps all the rain out. My foundation inside is literally mulch, <laughs> if you can believe that. Uh, it's a mulch floor with some rocks and some, uh, yeah, some rocks and some uh, erosion barrier to keep the, the sides. And so I didn't want to pour concrete, it's just a pain. So once I put all the glass in, I just came in with a bead of caulk. Just caulked most of the, all of these windows together. The last one on the end slides, it's like a door. That's why you see a little offset right here. But this caulk is amazingly strong. One time, okay, underneath this unistrut beam, I have another beam I built out of um, shelving gondola bolted together, this 20 foot long beam, and it sagged. One time it sagged and it came far enough down the glass up there that it came out of that piece of unistrut and it was bowing out. Three panels were bowing out. 
released from the top piece of unistrut, but this caulk, silicon caulk, is so strong that it held the glass in there to my amazement. No glass broke. And since then I've jacked up the beam underneath uh, with little beams to hold it up. So, um, so these won't ever sag again. But this is held like this for at least three years now and I've had no problems. Uh, it's great because it gives you a large expanse of glass with no seams. At the top, I put in some of this foam. It's again this gym pad flooring to keep the glass from rattling back and forth. It does tend to slip out some, so I have to sometimes press it in there, but I think there's enough in there that uh, it stays compressed. And every now and then one falls out because some are thicker than others, but there's always some in there to keep the glass from rattling back and forth. Here you can see, this one is not um, siliconed in. I took off the silicon to uh, put some of these IBC totes in the door, but here this, that one's not siliconed all the way to here. Let's see. I guess these two are the only ones siliconed for now. Um, but when you put the silicon in, leave enough room for a knife blade to go in the middle because when I wanted to cut the silicon off to get an IBC tote in my greenhouse, I couldn't fit the blade in the middle and man, it was hard to remove. I could not get the blade in. I had a friend stretch it this way while I put the blade in and it goes to show how tough that stuff really is. Here's a piece of that foam or insulation. I don't know what you call it. They use it for air conditioning boxes. Uh, but this stuff you can pick up at the construction sites where they're building houses all day long. You can fill your car or your truck up with this stuff. They're happy to get rid of it. I always ask them and it made a great insulating roof. I put some putty, I don't know what they was, construction adhesive on the top of these on the bottom of these tin roofs panels and stuck most of them in there. I took this one down to show you what it was. So this glass is single pane um, tempered glass. It was interior glass to a building I used to work in. They were remodeling the building and one day I drove into work and these guys are loading multiple panels of this stuff. I've got even more in my garage. They were loading them into this big long dumpster. I thought, man, I am gonna grab that for later. So I got this glass for free. I didn't even have to move it into my truck. The guys were nice enough. It was more convenient for them to put the glass into my truck than it was into the dumpster. So that was a score. If you ever see a building getting remodeled. Man, stop it for later. <laughs> that could save you a fortune on your greenhouse. This panel over here is wider than these panels and I used that for a door. Here's a short piece of unistrut that kind of goes over the glass like this again, letter C kind of facing down. And I just pull it open when I need to. I have a piece of extra unistrut here and here to hold the door up at the top from falling back or forth. And I have a similar thing at the bottom of the door. Mm, there is a gap here because the door is not close to this window here. So I'm trying to figure out how to close that gap. During the winter I actually shoved feed bags in there and that's what these little binder clips are for um, right there i have a bunch of them that i put on here and that helps to to hold the feed bags in place it's a little unsightly i'm trying to figure out how to bridge that gap it's about three inches so if you have any ideas for that i'm all ears